How bad is uh, the coronavirus hit to GDP as far as you guys can tell so here? Well, I think there's very real threat, um, which should be obvious now with, as you mentioned, the amount of school closures and the, the order for social distancing, you know, very real chance for getting negative growth, which would mean recession in the U.S. And and that, you know, the R word tends to scare people. But what I what I ask folks is, is the, not, the market been trading like we're in recession, fixed income markets trading like we're in recession, the Fed responding like we're in recession, or that's what we expect uh, to come from them? Uh, and fiscal policy acting like we're in recession. So does it really matter if economists are putting a negative sign in front of growth numbers uh, or not? I mean, clearly these leading sentiment surveys pointing to something nasty in the data to come. And uh, to your point, maybe just declaring the obvious for what it, the market is, is already telling us. So uh, trying to kind of prevent that event from happening, we do have this potential big fiscal stimulus announcement that's coming. The Fed has done a lot. Uh, can they help to make sure it's not a, a deeper contraction? Is that going to come soon enough, you think? Yeah, I think that they, they you know, act, of course, monetary policy has been able to act much more quickly than, than uh, fiscal policy. But fiscal has finally gotten on board, and we're seeing uh, signs that, that, is, uh, that we've lit, in a, lit a fire under that, let's say. And, yes, the, the point is to cushion the blow. Um, you're not going to be able to do a whole lot against uh, the virus except from the health uh, health and, and public policy standpoint. If you're the Fed, you can cushion the blow uh, by helping households and businesses try to weather this as best they can. And so we expect the Fed to drop rates to zero percent. We expect a major quantitative easing program to be announced that's open-ended mm. um, to help be that backstop for financial markets. On the fiscal policy side, uh, as you mentioned, Nancy Pelosi will be making a statement. We've heard from the House on some of the measures that they would be pro proposing, mostly targeted toward the lower income groups that are really going hurt, to get hurt when they can't report to work. Uh, and then on the uh, um, uh, and then from the president later today. So we think that, that a fiscal package on the order of, say, $500 billion or so, which would be a typical-sized response to a downturn, um, would go a long way um, in helping to at least take uh, some of the nightmare out of what's going on around the, the U.S. and around the globe of the spread of the virus and help to lay the groundwork for what the economy can look like on the other side of it. So, you, Ellen, you mentioned that you expect major open-ended QE uh, is coming. So I guess it doesn't really help to put a dollar figure to that. But what are they going to buy? I mean, it was interesting to hear Eric Rosengren of the Boston Fed last week say, look, buying the 10-year might not make sense because the yield is already below the Fed funds, right? Whereas in the past, that was seen as one kind of accomplishment of this policy. What would they buy and what will it accomplish? Yeah, so it's a good question. So QE is both Treasuries and MBS, and let's not forget the MBS part of it. So in terms of Treasuries, he's absolutely right. Why would you buy Treasuries? You don't need to get longer-term rates lower, um, except that it is more about the messaging of just pulling out all the stops. Uh, and so there is some help that you can do there, in especially in terms of supporting sentiment. On the MBS side, which we think is the much more interesting part of this, is that the prime rate has not dropped as much as longer uh, run rates, longer-term rates. Rates. And so households are getting a benefit here. We're seeing a lot of refinancing going on. We're seeing a lot of rise in mortgage applications. Uh, but it could be even better if the Fed buys MBS and uh, mortgage-backed securities and stops letting MBS uh, roll off their balance sheet. You can get that mortgage rate even lower and get households an even bigger benefit. Our housing strategists think it could be uh, about 300 additional dollars in savings per month for households that are able to refinance finance right now. So the traditional spread between the 10-year Treasury and your mortgage rate is around 1.9, maybe two points. You're saying that the Fed can start doing a big bond buying operation, essentially buying mortgage-backed securities. They could get that spread how low? I mean, do you think the mortgage rate would go below 3 percent? Because, you know, psychologically, that could really cause a rush of activity. Yeah, well, and we're already seeing a, a big rush of activity. So just think of it as uh, even, even more that it would be providing there. I mean, I think they're going to view any kind of modicum of support that they can give to the economy as something that's appropriate um, to do. And, you know, QE is, of course, the most... Uh, you know, uh, focused on policy that they could do. But I think that we get an entire uh, package from the Fed as well. I mean, they can lower the rate on the discount window 
uh, to encourage more use of it. They can remind that they've got the uh, U.S. dollar swap uh, uh, swaps that they can do. You've also got um, uh, facilities that can be reignited that haven't been used since the financial crisis that can more directly channel credit into even non-financial sectors of the economy. And that may be needed when you've got companies uh, that are just down and out in the leisure and hospitality uh, area and areas of tourism. You know, it's easy to get these things done uh, and agreed to because there's a human story to this. It's sure. not bad behavior like the financial crisis. And that's why I think we're also seeing fiscal policy leaders uh, moving quickly now. Okay, Ellen, uh, really helpful, really insightful stuff. Thank you so much.